This jig not only allows you to take rough saw and lumber and joint the edges at 90 degrees, just like a jointer, it also transforms into a precision tapering jig as well. You can use pieces of various lengths, customize them to whatever angle you want, and then lock them down for the ultimate in repeatability. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this thing, and it is fantastic. And you don't need a dado stack to put these T-tracks in these grooves either. Pretty simple process. Join me for it. Let's go. You like those sound effects? Anyway, hey guys, this is one of those projects I've been meaning to make for a very long time. Um, I'm gonna give you a little introduction to it before we make it. I did say in the beginning that you don't need a dado stack for this, and that's true. We're gonna layer up plywood to create the grooves that the T-tracks are gonna sit into. Also, the tapering aspect of this, I'm super excited about. Plus, I'm in between jointers right now. I sold my old jointer, uh, looking to upgrade, get a bigger one. So for the time being, for sure, this is gonna help me out, most definitely. So. Uh, I did make a prototype of this. I'm gonna show you a picture of it here. Um, yeah, it didn't work out that great. In fact, let's just talk about that just for one second. When is a prototype not a prototype, right? When it works out the very first time you make something and it's just, it, it performs like you want it to. The first one you make, if it does that, no, there is no prototype, it is what it is. But <clears throat> because that needed some little work, it needed a little work. Um, I used five eighths inch thickness plywood for that which meant the bed of it was too high to cut two inch material for a completely raised up saw blade on the table saw. And I got a lot of two inch stock lying around. So I, I made some dining tables and I still have some left. And I would like to keep that thickness if I need to. Um, so <clears throat> long story short, I made another one. Um, I am gonna end up giving that one to my dad. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I was there the other day and we're cladding his shop. Just had a spray foam with uh, plywood as well plywood walls, that's gonna be uh, something that I'm probably gonna document and put on this channel too. Uh, so stay tuned for that in the future. But this time, we're gonna make this jig, we're gonna get right into it now. And uh, this, I think, is the final form. And I really like how it turned out. So, without further ado, let's go build it. All right, go. So to begin this project, I'm taking a piece of half inch furniture grade plywood. We're gonna rip down two 12 inch pieces that are roughly 30 inches in length. And one of those pieces, I'm gonna cut two two and a half inch pieces off of the ends. I've got some of this anodized aluminum blue T-Track here from Rockler. I wanna thank Rockler for helping me make this video as well. Everything I'm using in this video is in the description below. And I definitely recommend you go check them out. Now you're gonna see when you cut this on a bandsaw, you're gonna have some spurs or some kind of some, some frayed edges. And what I like to do is hold it like a pencil and run it up against a sanding pad. And for the spurs that are inside, here's a little trick for you. Just take a standard deck screw and get them out like this. This process works pretty well for me and I think it will for you as well. And as always, every time I'm using plywood, I like to take a little bit of time to sand down and break the edges for sure. And this is no exception. This piece is going to be touched and used quite a bit, and it needs to be soft to the touch on the edges. You don't want to get a splinter while you're using your table saw. Trust me, that is not a good situation. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take those pieces that we cut, and we're going to basically tack them in place on the ends of one of those 30-inch pieces. You're going to see here, now we're going to put our T-track down. We're going to take our other piece that we actually used to cut those ends off, make a small mark, take it back to the table saw or your chop saw, whatever you got, cut it to size and then lay it in place. You can see here this layering effect is giving us that makeshift dado that we also desired to put that T-track down in this piece. With the base complete, now time to turn our attention to make the top of the jig. I'm cutting down a three inch strip of plywood along with an inch and a quarter strip. We're gonna put those together along with the thickness of a T-track to cut the bottom piece as well. And just like before, we sand everything down and put some glue down and some brads and we're gonna attach the top of this to the base. Again, I wanna make sure you guys line everything up just right. That way you don't have to come back and trim and sand anything over again. And now it's time to make another makeshift dado with that inch and a quarter piece of plywood. We put a bead of glue down, put the T-track in place, tack everything in place and yes, there is our makeshift dado. Love this technique for sure. So we're going with Total Boat's trusty four minute epoxy. Yes, this is not your grandfather's five minute epoxy. Total Boat is better than every other fast setting epoxy by one minute. I'm gonna link this stuff down below. This stuff is awesome because one, it does come in two parts and they're different colors. And as you mix it, they turn white. 
Once you've mixed it about a minute and a half, you're good to go. And this stuff is super strong. So we're going to go ahead and take some of the uh, epoxy and flood the bottom of each of these pieces. You're going to notice the T-Track is silver on the bottom, and that's because I sanded that down to give it a little more tooth, a little more grip. That way the epoxy has something to hold on to. So after clamping the T-Track in place, there is one little thing you might have to do when layering, especially plywood. Plywood is not quite a half an inch, it's just shy. And the T-Track is exactly a half an inch. So to keep everything flush, you gotta sand it down, revealing a little bit of that aluminum that is exposed. I think that's okay, not a big deal. Actually, I kinda like the silver and blue look as well. And now it's time to put a few holes into that top we just made. I'm using Rockler's Forstner bit here. You're gonna see, I'm gonna link down below everything Rockler has to do with this video. And this process goes pretty quickly as well. You can use a router for this. However, I'm choosing to use a Forstner bit coming back after these holes are drilled all the way through. And we're gonna cut a recess in there with the handy dandy, yep, favorite tool, the jigsaw. Actually, I'm just kidding. The jigsaw is actually a pretty darn handy tool, especially for something like this. And a tip I'm gonna give you about using a jigsaw is that you don't wanna push down on this saw very hard at all. Let gravity kind of do its thing. The more you push down on a jigsaw, the more the blade's gonna deflect on you. And yeah, I've had bad experiences with this and it's taken me a few years to actually learn that a jigsaw, you're your own worst enemy. So just let the jigsaw do its thing, go slow, and you're gonna have really nice cuts. So these slots are gonna hold a T-nut and they're gonna be fashioned in place with a star knob you're gonna see here. I've assembled it. For some reason, I didn't have any footage of me assembling this thing, but you can kind of get a glimpse right here of the finished product. There it is. It's there. You're gonna see me move it around on the two lateral T-tracks and then we're gonna hold down a piece of pallet wood that doesn't have a straight edge whatsoever. And we're gonna go ahead at real time. I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. You rest the jig up against the table saw fence, and then you make your cut. Once everything is overhanging by about an eighth inch or so, you're gonna notice the T-track there doesn't come all the way to the edge. That's because I have a saw stop, and you don't wanna get aluminum too close to that blade as the conductive nature of it might set off the break. But there you go. You can plane this later, but this video and this jig is definitely about jointing edges of boards and giving you a nice tapering option as well. Once you joint that edge, you can then put that edge up against the fence, push it through, and now you have two edges that are exactly 90 degrees parallel from each other because you had the forethought to make a jig just like this. I really do encourage you guys to make this. Now for the tapering option. I've got some scrap plywood here. And don't worry about it being a circle. But I'm taking these pieces and I'm cutting them down and I'm gonna assemble them at a 90 degree angle. You're gonna see here. After this, we're gonna take it to the drill press and I'm gonna drill one single hole that's just a little bit bigger in diameter than a T-nut. Of course, we're gonna sand everything down, make it nice and smooth, and then we're gonna install it. I have a T-nut here with not a star knob, but a small little circular knob that kind of is a perfect application for this. And we're gonna install this stop just like so. Now the idea here is that this stop is gonna be a reference point for when you want to make tapers. You're going to see you can extend this jig out at an angle. And now you have a stop block for your piece to rest as you push it through the table saw, which gives you really, honestly, the best repeatability possible for a situation like this. And now, just as before, we set our fence up and we run our piece through, giving us a really nice cut and a nice taper. I'll show you a better example of how to make tapered legs in just a minute, but I need to make a few different changes to this jig. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first change is gonna be, well, this piece is just too bulky. What I need to do is I need to take it off because I can't remove it without either taking the entire nut off or removing that star knob. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a few marks here. I'm gonna trim it down to the table saw. Of course, again, I'm gonna sand it down for sure. But now, with this application, I can now install it right through the T-Track and not have to take any knobs off whatsoever. There is one more thing I need to do to it is that I believe the edge that is gonna be holding the tapered pieces is just a little too weak. So I'm taking a piece of walnut, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and fashion that down. Once I cut it to size, I'm gonna use a little bit of CA glue, of course. This stuff is amazing. I've got coupon codes for this. You can save yourself 15% starbond.com. And again, I use it as a tool and the glue. It's kind of the most versatile thing in the shop, believe it or not. And once it's in place, you can see that that piece of walnut is gonna give this piece just a bit more rigidity and a little bit more strength. Yeah, love how that turned out. One more thing I gotta make is a handle. Now this piece can't be pushed through the table saw very easily without something like this. And I was definitely in need of, definitely a handle for sure. So I've taken a piece of walnut to the bandsaw. We've cut out a makeshift handle and we're gonna round it. We're gonna take a quarter inch round over bit and soften up all the edges. And now it's time for some sanding. And quite frankly, I am not gonna sand this on camera. It's just uh, the shape of it, just gonna be too inappropriate, sorry. So once it's sanded down, I'm gonna take a countersink bit and I'm gonna drill about a quarter of an inch through in the front and the back of this. This is gonna allow me to flush mount the screws that are gonna attach it to the jig. And again, using some CA glue and activator, we're gonna hold this piece in place, giving me a really strong hold to get these screws driven in and that thing's not going anywhere. So with everything installed, let me show you how to cut a proper taper on this. Process is the same as before. You butt it up against the table saw's fence. You align a piece with the blade, whatever angle you want. Set it down, lock it in place, and push it through. Now you've got repeatability as well because, of course, you want four legs. For a table, you can do that with all four of these pieces as well. And once you've got all four pieces cut in this direction, you simply take the piece, turn it 90 degrees clockwise, fashion it down again, and run it through the table saw without changing any of your settings, and you have a beautifully tapered leg. These legs came out fantastic. Can't wait to install them on a table. If you're not subscribed, please do so now as this is an upcoming project. And by cutting these tapers, you also get the fanciest shims you've ever seen. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. This is one of those projects where I've owned a table saw for quite some time now and I've been meaning to make a jig like this for so many years and I'm not even sure why it took me that long to do so. And one more thing, what do you think about behind me here? This corner of my shop was never really seen. If it was, it was an accident. This was a hodgepodge of stuff and I was rather embarrassed that it was kind of a catch-all and now I love it. It's kind of my little corner where I get to do some assembly, some sanding, so brad nailing it's pretty cool it's it's i'm really digging it so and it really did free up a whole lot of space in the shop for i mean, i'd be cliche here and say to do activities uh but i'm not going to say it but i guess i just ruined it by saying it anyway <laughs> anyway thank you so much your viewership is enough for me very much so but if you would i would really appreciate you guys sharing this video if you got something out of it you know if you like that smash button i'd really appreciate like that did i say like that smash button i did smash the like button God bless. Uh, you know what? I'm not even gonna, this is not even going to be an outtake. I'm just going to say thank you, and I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys on the next project, okay? My name's Chris, and I've given you a glimpse inside how to knock a leg over. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>